One of the best tools I've picked up recently is a vinyl cutter. I grabbed this silhouette portrait off of Amazon a while ago and it is worth its weight in gold. There's simply so much you can do with it. You can use it to add logos and you can use it to add embellishments to your props that really make them pop and really continue a theme out. But you can go further. You can connect it with your 3D software and you can actually use it to make precision vinyl wraps that are actually based on your 3D file. So you know they're going to fit perfectly every time. And using the specialty vinyls that are out there, of which there are tons, you can do really cool stuff. Like, for example, you can move over into textiles, and you can use iron-on vinyls to make logos, and you can even make faux embroidery using your vinyl cutter for precision. Heck, you can even go nuts, and you can even label your luggage like I do using your vinyl cutter. The options are just amazing. It's a really great tool. However, for some of the more interesting uses that you may find as a prop and costume person, the instructions that come with these don't really cover that. And so, how to use a vinyl cutter for some of the applications I've shown here today will be this quick tip. There's two main ways that you can get items into Silhouette. Uh, the first is via tracing an image, and the next is by importing in a DXF, and I'll show you both of those. So the first thing is, let's look at an image. So in this example, I've just pulled up a random image right here because it seems good enough for me. What you're going to need to do is edit this image so it is a pure black and white image. Whatever is black is going to be the vinyl. Whatever is white is going to be cut out. It's going to be space. So the first thing you're going to need to do is open up this image in some kind of photo editing software. So I use GIMP, so we're just going to whip this up really quickly in GIMP. Uh, very simple process. Uh, I'm not exactly a master at this, but all you need to do is basically crop whatever particular uh, item you're looking at down to the size that you're vaguely going to want it. Then what you're going to want to do is make it a black and white image. And then using a few tools, you're going to play around and basically crank up uh, the contrast, making it so that you basically get a black and white image. going to open up that image as a new file. So let's grab the one we just did. That'll pop this guy open. The first thing you see, it, it pops up uh, at whatever size it was at. You can rescale it by clicking and dragging it, or you can use uh, the rescale option, which is this guy right here, uh, if you want to do a percentage. But what you're going to want to do is go to Trace. You click Trace. The first thing you're going to do is select your trace area. So what the heck should this computer program be looking at? So we're looking at that area. And here's the thing that was not immediately clear to me. Yellow is vinyl, not yellow is going to be cut out. So you're not trying to trace it, you're trying to fill it. So you want the whole area that you are going to be cutting out to be yellow. So you can play with these two sliders. One is threshold, the other one is your high pass filter. Threshold is basically how black or how white do you want it to consider vinyl to be. And then your high pass filter basically is kind of what I was doing earlier, is playing with your contrast and, and getting a good image. Now again, you can play around and it also depends on the quality of your image. But when you're happy, you basically got the image you're looking for. You can go over here and you hit trace. Uh, this will trace everything, uh, which won't immediately be apparent until you click on your image and slide it sideways. And now you can see it's done a reasonably good job. Uh, now again, uh, you may see that, you know, you got some gooberage here. You can either go clean up your image uh, and try to make this a bit easier, or you can always simply delete what you've done and start again and play around until you get your particular settings of threshold and high pass filter just the way you want it to get the image you're looking for. Now if you're like me, you're going to want super precision on this. And so if you're doing anything with very crisp lines, the tracing is going to tend to round things out. It's not going to give you those perfectly straight lines that you're looking for. You're going to want to use a piece of, of software that ends up generating a DXF. Now, you can use Inkscape, but I use SolidWorks. So hopping into SolidWorks here, so you're going to need to create whatever your image is. You can use your dimensioning tools and make it exactly the size you want. But then the next thing you're going to need to do is make it 2D. Now, if you're working in Inkscape, you're already working in 2D. And things to remember is if you go here to your properties, you need to be in a one-to-one -one scale. Otherwise, you're not actually exporting the dimensions you want. 
DXFs don't know what their units are and they don't know what their scaling factor is. They're just kind of dumb numbers. So you need to be one to one and you need to remember what your units are. So in this case, I'm in millimeters. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna save this particular drawing as a DXF. Now, the next thing I'm gonna need to do is jump over into my silhouette. Now, you're gonna need to go down here into your edit and you're gonna need to go to your preferences first. This is very important because this screwed me up when I first started using these programs. You're gonna need to go, excuse me, into your import options. When importing GSD, don't care. When importing DXF, you need to click as is. If you don't, it's going to rescale things and basically defeat the purpose of using a DXF. This is important. The next thing you need to do is look at your units. So you can see here in the general settings, we have unit of length, it defaults to inches. This needs to match whatever the unit you tend to use is. I use millimeters, I export my DXFs as millimeters, so I need to be in millimeters. So once you have everything set up, you can go into here and say, I wanna open, again, scroll down until you find your, right there, your DXF, say open. First thing that's gonna happen is you're probably not gonna see anything. And that's because it didn't center it because we don't want it messing with my files, so it's way up here. First thing, grab a corner, drag down, select everything, object, group. Uh, otherwise, you might grab and drag a part of your image, and all of a sudden your DXF is totally screwed up. That would be very bad. Now, here's my little, my little eye of raw, really nifty. It's the exact dimensions I want, but I can still scale it. I can come up here and say, okay, I want this to be... 200, boom, I got 200. The thing to remember is that once you scale something, it doesn't remember how big it was originally. Because if I say, oh, never mind, I want this to be 100, nothing's changing. Uh, the 200% increase became the new norm. So if I want to put it back, I have to remember how big it used to be. So that's something to remember. The next thing is you may export a DXF and realize there's parts of it you just don't want. So the first thing you would do is go up here, object, ungroup, in case anything was a separate group, like in this case, this O. The next thing you need to do is select your object. You need to go down here, and what you're looking for is... Uh, modify, modify options, there we go. Uh, this pops up a whole unit, which makes things a little bit clearer. You click on your thing, you click divide. What this will do is break it into any unit it thinks makes sense. So for example, now this part of the end, that part, these have all been broken out into different parts. So let's imagine I don't want the props and costumes part. I can just delete those all off. I can then select and regroup and boom, I have a modified object. Now for certain objects, you can't actually break them up any further. Say like this eye. Say I want to divide that, it's not working. Well, I want to get rid of this inner eye because I'm insane and I want to do that. You can click on this uh, area up here, edit points. You can click on one of the points and you can simply click delete points. Now this will take a while, as you can see, depending on how complex the shape is, but it's a way to get rid of something you don't want. And then again, you can simply click on here to exit back out. Or you can control Z your way all the way back to that sexy finished Amon Ra Creations eyeball. And then again, you just select and group. And now this is how you can get precision items. So looking over here, this is the precision exported flat pattern of the wood grain sections of my Corvo blade. So I can cut these guys out and they will precision fit. So this is where using the correct dimensions are very important. Obviously, I don't want this scaled in a weird way. So again, you can either go ahead and use an image or you can go ahead and use something that is directly exported from something that can generate a DXF. Either one will work. And so once you have everything finished and decided, all you need to do is whoop your way all the way up here and do your cuts. Depending on what material you're using, uh, for example, if I'm cutting most vinyls, I'll use vinyl. If I'm cutting actually thick uh, vinyl, say the, the iron-on vinyl, I may jump up to cardstock. This particular program tells me what I need to set my ratcheting blade to. It automatically adjusts the speed. And all I do is I click Send to Silhouette, and I can start cutting. You grab your sticky sheet, it comes with your vinyl cutter, you grab a piece of vinyl, and you stick the two together. Now, a special note, uh, if you get the cheaper, crappier kind of vinyl, 
they use a very cheap backing, and so the paper might rip right off and stay stuck to your actual item. So what you'll need to do is do a little test, like say on the corner, stick it down really well and rip it off to see if the backing comes off. If it's happening, you don't have to get rid of your vinyl, just coat the back of it in some masking tape or some packing tape, and then you should be good to stick it on and you don't have to worry about it ripping off. Stick this guy on, feed it into your machine, and click cut. So once you have all the excess vinyl removed, you're going to need to put this into its final position. Now if it's just a solid piece, you can peel and stick no problem, but most likely you're going to have little floating bits. And so what you need to do is basically stick this to something and then transfer it over. Now you can use masking tape, but you can go and buy special clear masking tape, this transfer tape made specifically for vinyls. And this is great because it allows you to stick everything down but still see where you're eventually going to stick everything to. So you simply stick this on and then using like the side of a pen simply really mash it down and then when you peel this off it should peel your entire design off ready to go. And then all you need to do is choose where you're going to stick it, in this case a random water bottle I found in my kitchen. And all you need to do is stick it down, line it up where you want, and then using the side of the pen again simply stick this down. Mashing really well because what you want is for the vinyl to stick better to the substrate that you're sticking it to than the masking tape is stuck to your actual vinyl. Now sometimes this, vine, this uh, transfer might be too sticky and so what I'll end up doing is I'll actually make like cut a piece, stick it to like a shirt, peel it off and then use it to kind of deaden how sticky this particular clear masking tape is. It depends on the vinyl you're using and you know, how devoted you are to uh, carefully using a razor blade to make sure you don't peel back up your design. But if you're lucky, oh come on lucky, uh, you can simply peel all of this off and there you go you have just added a really cool logo to your prop or costume piece. Another super duper quick tip is if you're putting it on something that doesn't have really great contrast, go ahead and take black paint and distress everything and then just wipe it back off. It'll help highlight the, those edges of the vinyl because the paint will get stuck in those transitions and it'll really help some of your more subtle items, say silver on silver and in this case gloss on gloss, to really kick out and be visible. So that is how I use the Silhouette software and the Silhouette machine to add nifty little embellishments to, well, water bottles, as well as props, costumes, and everything in between. Now what I'm showing you is specific to the Silhouette software, but the tips and the general processes will work very well, I assume, on a number of different machines. With that, I will remind you that if you have any questions or quandaries on any tools, processes, or materials that I have mentioned on any of my videos here on YouTube, or on the projects I show off on my Facebook page, feel free to drop a comment down below. It may end up being the inspiration for my next quick tip. And with that, I will wish you the best of luck on all your projects.